What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and as always, it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews for games that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. And today's tale is the underwater digital depth-seeking submarine shoot 'em up open-world single-player linear story extravaganza known as Deluvian. Let's see if this tale that looks like one part missing Jules Verne short story and one part Rebel Galaxy underwater can hold its own under the Stygian depths of many hours of gameplay. Or is it this company's version of Waterworld? As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for Deluvian. Dark Souls with scuba gear, my patience finally meeting its own crush depth, and using a single oxygen mask from an airplane for your entire air source. Graphics are up first. Honestly, at many times, Deluvian looks magnificent. The grimy, questionable alphabet soup that floats through the water is almost threateningly thick at times, and yet at other times you soar through crystal clear water, following glow-in-the-dark fish to some ancient landmark. And that fantastic exploratory feeling is consistently reinforced by this topsy-turvy world you find yourself in. It's a little bit steampunk in their design as well, especially Deluvian subs, which have a unique soul to them. And while only a few really stand out, the fact is they all look pretty damn cool, appearing more like like fanciful children's plans than actual underwater vehicles though, and obvious nods to the Nautilus in some of the designs are instantly noticeable. And a lot of that beauty continues as he deep six a continual chorus line of enemy pirates all ripe for the picking as torpedoes pass each other in the water and you load your guns that basically seem to fire just scrap metal bullets as quick as you can at one another. And each hit you're rewarded with debris falling away or shooting that one torpedo that was just about to turn your sub into a canoe. Very cool parts. The only problem is as you continue to play it, the game absolutely falls apart Does Design-wise. First, the UI is just out there. It's cumbersome. When you're puttering around, you're locked to a horribly restrictive third-person view that's leaning so far to port, it looks like they took a page from Gears of War offset third-person camera and then copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste. This causes no end of issues as the water and your steering indicator can easily mesh together, especially because the water has a lot of particulate in it. And during the busier times, this results in you misidentifying how close you are to a rock face as you are diving to escape three pirates that all decide to follow that one dude who looks like he had 11 to keep shots. The devs have said that they have a lot of folks requesting a first-person view, and I think it makes sense why. I mean, even the FOV setting is weird and replaces me as the dictionary's perfect description of useless. Regardless of the settings, I couldn't shake the feeling I was steering the sub with one fucking propeller turning and the opposite eye closed. Then you have the compass, which, I'm gonna be honest, looks amazing, displaying this awesome-looking circular compass with huge letters with your ship sort of in the center and markers highlighted around it. Sadly, this is the best example of looks aren't everything. I Icons for compass directions actually blot out your view when turning sometimes, depending on the camera angle. It's just a mess, and at times, honestly, it felt like it was a placeholder for something, well, good. Form needs to meet function. Instead, form met fuck all. Also, while the game runs okay on the GTX 1080 at 1080p with everything set to the highest, Everything here, meaning just one single slider that ranges from basic graphics to uber without much definition of what's occurring. Sadly, on the highest setting, sometimes the game would just go batshit insane and instantly develop cataracts, resulting in only being able to play on a lower graphics setting without all this blur. Separation here would have done well for me to be able to bug test it. Additionally, the game's mechanics for latching onto items, which is a major part of this game, is loathsome in its collision detection and animations. Aiming isn't that bad, it's the fact that your ship jostles and bounces and flings around like a fucking marlin getting landed by a retiree with too much time on their hands. It sucks and it actually just looks really bad. And lastly, and sadly, when you go into the sub, there's a noticeable pause as it draws in. And see, you use the mouse to move around the locations, scrolling right or left. And this can result in the entire screen sliding downwards just because you had to click on the word no in a dialogue. And it was at the bottom of the screen. Some pretty glaring design issues actually abound throughout the graphics here. The controller worked okay for this, but still, it didn't hold up as well as I would have liked. As a package, Deluvian looks far more like a game that just wants to have pretty trailers, but once you're neck deep in a pirate's trench, you don't want to worry about the giant letter W blocking your fucking vision. Really, when you look at it, this is less Aquanox than it probably wants to be. Hell, it's not even Nox, that rip-off Diablo game. And I'm certainly not saying it looks ugly, it's just the fact that it seems far more interested in looking good than playing well. Sound, music, and voice.
So sound was actually pretty spectacular, from the maddening babble of bubbles of leaking air to the thick honey-like acoustics of deep water explosions. It's epic to come blasting into a location and hear huge deep thrums as two pirates bite off more than they can chew and try to take on a heavily armed merchantman, to their chagrin. And the first time you scrape the side of your sub against another as you both race past one another for a torpedo run, that sound will send chills up your spine guaranteed. Some pretty good sounds here. Music. So actually this is okay with a light airy fare that envelops you as you enter new locations to more dark and sinister prompts that reflect the danger of locations you're in as you dive down deep a bit into the darkness to see if you can get some salvage. What is nice here was the range from the echoey harmonics of what sounds like guitars played in oil drums to fine triangles and bells and ambient synths that travel underneath all of it. It's not as much a thematic soundtrack with a consistent feel as it is a backdrop to your adventures that sort of fit within the location. I love the experimentation within it, but it will not be something most people can probably listen to without being in the game itself. And of course, that always brings us to voice, and there's none, so let's move on. Gameplay. And first, a little bit about the story. You live in this world after a massive flood basically killed most of the wretched race of humanity. Those who are left have somehow clung on to survival, but they did it by living underwater and all manner of devices. As the years have passed, those locations have become sort of tribally owned, and then later, they're sort of kingdoms. Enter you, master of your own sub, one of a couple that you get to choose from, and then you're pretty much slapped into the deep blue to either sink or, well, sink deeper. Now, while the game is technically linear, the major story doesn't push you at all. It's open ocean, meaning for the most part, you can explore and tell your heart's content and the first thing you're going to discover is that the ship is sort of a character all by itself. Not only able to be upgraded and switched out for others, items can be found like unique torpedoes and guns, all that modify the ship. Additionally, you're going to take on crew who can man the helm, sonar guns, or torpedoes, or leave them in your ready room so they can repair damage to the sub. And I have to say, I loved the minigame here. Put more folks in your torpedo for quicker shots, or into the gun section for quicker reloading, or helm for faster movement and quick course changes. It's a fantastic addition and is brilliantly done here and really allows you to play the way you want to. When it comes to the crew, what would a game be if it called itself an RPG and didn't have stats? And of course, this one does. Each crew is outfitted with a score and four attributes like intelligence and endurance that affect their bonuses that they add to the different sections of the ship that you put them into. And you can also get items that augment them. Now, at some point while exploring, you're going to go head to head with bad guys, whether they're story based or epically insane leviathans of the deep or just straight up pirates. And let's be honest, these would make real pirates run for the fucking hills in terror because they need no food, drink, water, air, or the necessities you do, which basically means they patrol in circles endlessly until you stray too close to them and they go batshit nuts and attack. Battle sees you able to fire off weapons like guns, and torpedoes as well as utilize some of the later bits as the game goes on. The issue here is that the game actually has a lot of mechanical problems. Let's start with the AI. As you guys know, I like to test AI to see how it reacts to newcomers just getting into their first little yellow sub with Jacques Cousteau all the way to hunting for Red October. And the first thing I notice is there is probably a reason these dudes just fucking putter around in circles all day like an old lady at a grocery store. Because they can't steer for shit. I mean it. Watch in awe as they slam headlong into the side of underwater mountains or suddenly get confused and just stop in the water for a bit, letting you pepper them with gunfire that's apparently made of shredded Campbell's soup cans shot at ridiculous velocities. Also, the fact that they really do rarely anything other than just wait for you absolutely kills the immersion. Now, with later subs, you can basically float by them laughing maniacally as you personally flood Davy Jones' locker with the skeletons of your victims. Later on in the game, you can also get homesteads, which are basically underwater bases, and they level up as well, which offers you a series of bonuses to gameplay. And there is actually a lot here, whether you progress through the story trying to uncover the mystery of this world and the people in it, or just explore, there is just a shit ton of content. Honestly, the game is pretty massive as you collect more and more subs. Sadly, the largest one is a Kickstarter-only backer, and it looks fantastic. Or you can travel to more and more dangerous locations. And truth be told, a couple have some amazing encounters. But that's another problem for me. Deluvian does its damned best to stop me from liking it at every turn. There are countless times where I saw something that made me take notice and then just as quickly made me want to punch someone in the nuts. For example, the game is actually filled with bugs, like an odd save game system. Dying's going to happen, whether it's your fault or just on accident. And that's when the respawn system and its wonky usage will crop up as enemies will kill you and then you respawn and the enemies are actually firing at you before the graphics dry in. This is the equivalent of sitting in a chair and spinning in circles with your arms out and yelling, I control this space and then fucking teleporting into someone else's chair and suddenly claiming that one like a dick. Also, the game hit a memory leak about seven hours in that required a couple reloads before it just magically started working well again. The game also tells you that it saves map locations you find, and yes, it may do that, it also may not. I spent one entire game where the 
first major base, no matter what I did, would not appear on the map, making directions a little bit more difficult, and then it appeared on the next game save. And really, the map is just this big paper with random items dropped down without any real-time data or data about where you are. Now, I like this personally. I'm a big fan of that kind of map, but unfortunately, it's also saddled with so many other issues that the depth has a hard time really getting through without being affected by something else. And of course, that brings us to Fun Factor. There is a lot of parts of this game I like, like when I first came upon the monster-like remnants of this ancient cargo container ship. It's back broken by unspeakable somethings just outside of the nasty soup that I was exploring. Or the first time you attempt to help a deranged sailor neck deep in his own solitary confinement who doesn't realize you're trying to help and he beats your crew member to death. Those were good times. Sadly, there's not as many as I would like, because the excellence of Deluvian's amazing fiction and worldview is lost in cluttered gameplay, poor control, and what appears to be a desire to put presentation of glamorous underwater moments before the actual polish of the gameplay. And make no mistake, there's actually an incredible amount of fiction here, especially if you check out their Kickstarter, you check out some of the different websites about this game. There's a, a lot of really interesting lore. As always, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale. This is actually a rent slash deep, deep sale because it's a digital title. It'll be less than 20 bucks upon release. The plain and simple fact is this is a mechanical monstrosity. There's bugs galore. There's issues with control, issues with the viewpoint. It has a lot of problems. And basically, it was sunk almost at the exact same time I was really impressed by parts of it. It was a very unique game, but it is not a game I would suggest other people run out and get at full price. So anyway, that's it for me. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs down. Check out Reddit or Twitter or Patreon. As always, if you want a place that gives you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullshit and buys every single game they review, stick with ACG. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.